Why hello there gorgeous. It has finally dropped the biggest update in Rust history. Let's do a tutorial and show exactly how to use electricity in the most basic way possible. But first, epic intro. No, I will not be showing you how to make this completely ridiculous sign. Two reasons, it is massively unnecessary and it consumes too much. Much like my car. I'm not even going to show you how to build a clock. I noticed a lot of Rust YouTubers are showing people how to build clocks, but if you look on the lower right hand side of the screen, you'll notice you already have a clock, which makes it fucking dumb. However, I am going to show you practical ways on how you can implement electricity into your base in an effective and useful manner. Let's do this. Good evening everybody, Flack is back and for the next 10 minutes I am going to assume that you are mentally disabled. Reason being is that most people assume that everybody knows electricity when in fact we don't. Let's start off with a wire tool. Cost 5 high quality metal and it is the lifeblood of your circuitry. It connects all your power sources to your power appliances. But the most important part of the circuit is of course the source of power itself, the battery. The power source is the heart of the electrical system having both an input and an output. When looking at the battery, you'll notice it has a charge time. This is like your cell phone. Of course, the higher the number, the more charge it has left. Now we have to supply this power source with the electricity. That comes in the form of either a wind turbine or of course, a solar panel. We all know how basic science works. The sun shoots out yellow blobs of wizard magic. The solar panel in turn consumes the wizard magic and then poops out electricity. Science. Hey, please have some more sunlight. No, thank you. I don't want more sunlight. Come on, you need more sunlight. You're looking skinny. Hey, I don't want any more sunlight. Come on, have a little more sunlight. I don't want any more sunlight, okay? Fuck you. Now, using the left click with the wire tool, we are going to connect the output side of the solar panel to the input side of the battery. Everything flows from out to in, out to in. I'm making the wires in this manner to keep it nice and neat, however, a direct connection is possible, it just looks like shit. The solar panel absorbs energy and puts it into the battery, making the charge time of the battery go up. This is the process of charging. Now of course we have to output that electricity from the output side of the battery and connect it to an appliance, like light. So from the output side we connect it, again I'm making the wires nice and neat along the wall, not necessary, but I like things to be pretty. Once connected, you'll notice the light instantly goes on because from solar panel to battery, battery to light, it works. However, ineffective because you cannot switch it off. Holding the right click clears the wire because now I'd like to add a switch. This is a regular switch. It is exactly the same switch that is at the entrance of your basement. The one directly under your mother's house. Right, now let's connect it up like before except now using the switch. From the output side of the battery to the input side of the switch and then from the output side of the switch we go straight back to the light. And now you have a circuit with a switch. Flip the switch, get electricity. Simple stuff, right? Now as the light powers you'll see the charge timer starts lowering. You flip the switch, the light goes off and then the battery starts charging again. Whilst batteries charge, they are not outputting anything. It works in vice versa. Once it's outputting, it no longer receives any charge. The device that I'm placing now is called a root combiner. It allows me to connect two sources of power to one output, aka two solar panels into the battery. Double sun power! At the moment, this functionality isn't working effectively. However, it does allow you to use two solar panels to one battery because this functionality isn't working and it doesn't increase or speed up your charge time, you wonder to yourself, well, why is this necessary? Well, shadows. Shadows make solar panels not work. And if you are older than three years old, you'll know that the sun moves. School has taught you that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So this allows us to place solar panels facing directly east and directly west. This enables from sunrise to sunset a full solar charge. Now let's take this basic theory and implement it into a build. This is a control room. I like to think of electronics to be just as important as your TC. So for the most part, in the future, when I do electronics, I'm going to be building them inside a separate room. Reason is, is because a single wire or a single panel or a single battery broken could disable a number of defenses or doors, and we want to keep that safe. So the solar panels we're going to place nice and high facing east and west to allow people to not grief and break it. 
down at the bottom, I'm going to place the battery. And you'll notice immediately that the battery has only one output. And that's a problem because one light switch means that the battery is going to be finished. To counter this, we're going to add a device called a splitter. A splitter is exactly that. It takes one power in and it splits it three ways out. This allows you to add up to three electronic devices. Now I'm placing a root device at the bottom so that I can add two solar panels to the battery. From the outputs of the root device, I'm going to connect it straight up to the battery as previously discussed. Connecting the solar panels though is a different story. From one of the outputs you'll see I'm aiming towards the roof. When going around the cord remains attached. This allows for easy placement through walls and through floors. After connecting up both of the solar panels, I now have a charging circuit. Now we're going to output straight from the battery into the splitter. However, you'll unfortunately notice that the power is now draining. Reason being that the splitter is always in a state of drain. So to counter this, we are going to add an electrical mains, which is a standard switch. All houses have them and essentially it is a main switch that cuts off the entire circuitry going into your home. From the battery, we're going to input it into the switch and then out from the switch into the splitter. It is charging now because the mains are off. As soon as we turn the mains on, it will activate that splitter, the splitter will become active and unfortunately that battery will start draining again. In the daytime, we keep our mains off so that all of our batteries can charge effectively and at night we can turn it on so our batteries can start being used and our base can be lit. Fairly simple. Next, we're going to hook up a door controller and a door controller is exactly that. It controls doors. Placing it near to a door means it automatically pairs with the door. However, if we try and activate it, nothing happens. This is because we first need to unlock the door code and then activate the controller. A little green light indicates to us that it is now officially paired and then it's just a matter of connecting it up. I'm simply going to add a little switch here. From the output side of the splitter, I'm going to feed it with electricity. And then from the output of the switch, I'm going to connect it straight up to the door controller. Once I flip the switch, it will receive power and the controller will open the door. Turn off the power, the door controller loses power and effectively closes the door. The pressure pad is exactly the same as the switch except it's on the floor. Standing on it, activated. Climbing off, deactivated. It has a regular power in and a regular power out, exactly like all other switches. So from the splitter, I'm going to provide a power out straight to the input of the pressure pad. And from the pressure pad's output, I'm going to wire it straight into the controller. Let's give it a test, shall we? Turn on the mains, stand on the pressure pad, and presto. Magic. Another method is the motion sensor. This is a small little red laser beam, works exactly the same. It has both a power out and a power in. Connecting the power into the splitter makes the beam go on. Outputting it straight to the controller means that when I trip that beam, it will activate the source. Technology. Love it. Next, we have something called the AB switch or the OR switch. This is exactly the same as the switch, except it has an input A and an input B, as well as one output. What this means is that I can apply two switches to separately activate it, like a regular switch or a motion sensor. So from the output, we go straight to the controller as normal. Then we're going to connect input A to this regular switch on the left. This allows an input A and an input B to effectively open the same circuit. Next, I'm going to connect the laser onto B. From this laser, I'm going to go straight into the B circuit, meaning the regular switch activates A, and the laser beam activates circuit B. Dual switch. This particular method is effective if you want two switches that open a door or if you want two switches on different sides of your base to activate the same light. Next, I'm going to show you how to build the automatic airlock. Now, it's happened to us hundreds of times. We get into a gunfight outside our base, we die, we respawn back in our base, and we spend about 20 minutes trying to get out of our base. This is because we've got 300 doors and we have to manually open and close them so that people don't door camp us and charge into our base. To do this, I'm going to place three pressure pads on the ground just before the doors and then link them up to power. So in the event that I need to respawn and quickly get out of my base, all I have to do is simply run over the pressure pads and then the doors open and close safely behind me. That way, if they are camping me, they can't rush into the base because the door will automatically close right behind me. Super effective method, especially for those big clan bases. Next, we have the automatic loot room light. Now, I want to make me a device that allows the light to go on every single time I enter 
my loot room. I'm going to place down a battery as well as a splitter because I'm going to need two power outputs for this. I'm going to feed the splitter with power and then from the output I need to power two items. One a timer and two a laser sensor. So firstly I'm going to feed the timer with some power and I'm going to be feeding my laser sensor with some power. When interacting with the timer, it allows me to set a duration of pass-through. I'm going to set it at 30 seconds. And from the top output, I'm going to wire the light. So every time I activate it, it's going to give me 30 seconds worth of electricity running through that timer. The timer is still busy activated. That's why the light went on instantly. The fuck? Seriously? So I need to wire the output of this laser into the side toggle. Toggle means activate. So every time I trip the beam, it will toggle the timer and the timer will activate. So I don't have to manually activate the timer. The laser will toggle it on for me, activating that 30 second time period and then feeding power through to the light. And that concludes the most easy to follow tutorial ever made. I try to make it nice and simple so that anybody can understand, even if you're a three year old Down syndrome baby. However, if you did enjoy it, please be sure to click on the sub button. And of course, I'll catch you next time. Like out. And today is the 12th of December, that marks 18 more days until I become a full-time YouTuber. That's right, from the 1st of January 2019, I'm going to be a full-time YouTuber. What this means is that I'm going to start following a regular upload schedule, which means two flat videos a week, every week, till the dawn of time. Thank God. Helping me on this quest, however, though, is the following Patreons. These guys are the lifeblood of the channel. Without them, I would have absolutely no chance on earth. So very, very big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. You guys fucking rock. And if you'd like to get involved in the Flactonian campaign, Patreon, Discord, Twitter, all my social links are in the description. Be sure to check them out. Bearing in mind, I absolutely prohibit any form of toxicity. So if you are a cunt, you will get banned. Again, thank you so much for watching, guys. Till next time. Blackout.